Let's see what I've got in my lunchbox today. All right, and we are here. Back again. Okay, <laughs> okay so let's just get right into it. Um, mm -hmm. The past week, there were five new episodes of regular show. Right. And a whole lot has happened. And I said on my first video, reviewing all five of the episodes that there were going to be spoilers that needed to be talked about. I had to talk about with someone because so much has happened. We had so much progression. Oh, I got you double three. were the one guy that okay. just came to the rest because I needed to talk to somebody <laughs> because so you well, first of all, just, just to be clear, uh, be super clear, you know, if you're watching this and you don't want any spoilers of the recent uh, regular show episodes, go ahead and, and click away now, go do something else. So anyway, go ahead. Or if you don't, if you just don't care about the spoilers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just uh, go ahead and uh, stay tuned, you know what I'm saying? So I think what everyone wants to know about right now is uh, a lot of people want to know what has been going on with Rigby and Eileen. <laughs> now, we have been waiting for this ship to sail for like, what, two and a half seasons? Sounds about right. Yeah, like every time, like every time we see them together, we ask, when are they gonna get together? They when keep is hinting at it, hinting at it. Yes, exactly. You know, and even back in the, uh, the the Dream Diary episode, when, when uh, Ricky admitted that he that he thinks, oh, Eileen looks pretty good. Like, but, you know, at the time he didn't follow up on it. I think Eileen looks hot without her glasses yes. on. Yes, that's exactly what he said. And ever since then, it's just been hinting because they've been together, like every chance that we got to yeah. see them. But then it took until this season to confirm it. Rigby says to Mordecai, and I quote, Eileen and I are dating. And, the, okay, I, I saw this episode twice because I had to watch it last night just so I can get the material right. for today. It was a lot more dramatic than I remember because Mordecai's reaction his mouth hung open, a bat flew past his face. <laughs> like, just a bat, because they were just in um, Muscle Man's trailer, which is a pigsty. Right. Drops his cup of coffee. It's so like, it's like, for a couple of months now. <gasps> and so my face was the exact same. Like, which is real good, because like, you know, the confession itself, they could have easily just made that in itself a whole episode, and he just dropped, dropped his bombshell in the middle of uh, Muscle Man's wedding. Exactly. And that's another thing that I had to say, too, because um, when they had to go and get, um, when they had to go and get Muscle Man's letter from his dad to read, yeah, Mordecai reads it, because, you know, Muscle Man is emotional right now, so everyone right. just listens, right. you know what I'm saying? So... Mordecai just takes in the words about referencing about like you, you'll, you'll be able to find your perfect soulmate someday, and when you have, just read this letter. And then Mordecai's like, you know what? Muscle Dad's right. I don't know who my soulmate is. It may be someone in this room, but I need to go with my gut. And I'm like, Mordecai, you're making the scene today. It's not about you. <laughs> yeah, see, that, that, that was the thing that that, uh, that really got to me. One, one, I think he took the. Uh, for one, the letter was not even meant to him, so I, I didn't think he he took it so much to heart. And this fact, he, you know, like like he said, this is definitely not his day, not his time. I can understand if we haven't. Uh, Could you wait until the end of the ceremony? Yeah, like, like he's having a second feeling, you know, bring it up at, at like the reception, you know, when they all sit at their own table or something, not during the middle of the wedding, like right before the I do. That's what bugged me. That's what bugged me. Like 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 this this is, this is not your time for your pedestal. Like, wait like five minutes. Wait until they walk down the aisle and then say something. I'm like, Mordecai, we've been waiting for like, I don't know, three seasons for you to just own up to your mess. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you, you pick, you know, muscle man's butt. I'm like, come on, dude, just show, show a little bit of class here. But there was no class. There, there, there was no class. It was like school on a holiday. But, okay, what I want to, what um, I'm thinking about right now is, what do you think is going to happen with Mordecai? Now that basically he's just pushing himself away from both Margaret and CJ, do you think that he's just going to do himself for a while and then he's going to come to a decision of who he wants, or do you think a third love interest is going to come in altogether? I was actually thinking that, like, because um, you know, the, the show as we've seen so far, they're definitely not against bringing in 
uh, new characters, whatever they freaking feel like. Oh, yeah, yeah. basically. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty much it. There's, there's essentially there's four different avenues they can go from this point. He can either um, take some time and go, go back to Margaret, take some time and go back to CJ, Introduce some third little interest to just make this the more kind of harem at the point. I think, I think I'm more, I think I'm more intrigued at that idea. I mean, not, not the harem. But I mean, I'm not putting that past you. I'm just saying, but the, uh, I'm thinking about the uh, third love interest. Right. I'm just curious of who it might be. Um, yeah, I, I can say it could be anybody at this point. But um, outside of those three, the only other option that could be is. Um, Kind of do like Rick was talking about, you know, you know, do yourself, you know, maybe, maybe we Focus get something on about Mordecai once. Yeah, maybe we get something about, you know, Mordecai pursuing some new career. Maybe he has to leave the park for some reason. Base, maybe, maybe. Like, oh my God, they because that one episode where they went to Australia, I was like, you know what, you guys should just stay there because you get because you have this, you have the same equivalent of the uh, starring characters. But yeah. They're just Australian. They're more badass. You had this one guy who just like led you there. <laughs> I, I can't really recall much of it, but I know that there was this guy and he was like only wearing pants. And I was like, this guy is awesome. I like him. Yeah, and I mean, despite the fact that, uh, you know, both of them are kind of slackers, they show they have uh, plenty of skills outside of just doing hard work. So yeah. Mordecai can really just go out and do anything. This is a matter of, um, you know, will the writers uh, partake on this or will they just keep to the love aspect and have them go in some other direction? Right. Now, after this, after this little uh, epiphany that Mordecai has and this whole resolution that he comes to finally, I think I'm done with seeing uh, Mordecai relationship episodes for like, to last me like one season. So what I want to know, what I want now is some Rigby and Eileen episodes because we know That's for a sure hundred, it is, it is like just, a, it couldn't be more of a perfect time because is 100% confirmed that they are dating. And as of that last episode, Dumbtown USA, I like how Eileen basically just pointed out all of Rigby's flaws. Like, well, you are kind of immature. Mm -hmm. You don't floss or brush your teeth, like, at all. And I'm like, Rigby, you're telling me you never brush your teeth? Like, he's a raccoon. Maybe he, like, builds up an immunity to tooth decay. I don't know. But uh, you're lazy. You never try anything new. I've been trying to, I've been wanting to try it. Ethiopian food place yeah. forever, and so she was like, "Okay, okay, take it back and wash." And so basically, I'm thinking that the, like, I think it was like just at the moment hostility, considering the situation. Yeah. But, but obviously, that's not gonna stick. Yeah, basically. But this is what I was thinking, like, like when Rigby just asked while he was waiting outside of the door, when she slammed in his face, like, did I just get dumped for reals? I'm thinking like, I think it was temporary. Like, like it wasn't. I didn't think it was temporary, but this is what was happening. She didn't really dump him, but it was basically a subtle threat. Like, yeah, you have all of these things wrong with you, but despite all that, I am still staying in a relationship with you. But if you do not shape up, I will dump you because I'm not stupid. Like, yeah, you're, 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 you're cute, but I'm not totally hopeless. I can find someone else, I'm pretty sure. Because of the, as of that last episode where they found those like two burly boyfriends, her and Eileen, that was like, yeah. that was like in season one, I think. But yeah, like, Eileen's not stupid. So, what I want th for the next season, or the next group of episodes, is some relationship development between Rigby and Eileen, because Rigby has shown some promise that he can, you know, mature, yeah. given given the circumstance. Yeah. So we, we definitely saw that back in the uh, the Eileen flat screen episode. Like, like, yes. Like, he, he was just all out, all generally good guy. He, like, went out and got his he went out and uh, out of his way to take home Eileen's flat screen TV, and he had the keys to her apartment. I was like, and when I first saw that episode, I was like, oh, he has the keys to her apartment. What is going on here? Yeah, I, just I, I feel like it, I feel like uh, before the um, the current confession, I felt like that was the most clear. We they ever were got. tugging at hairs at that point. I was like, are you really doing it there? He has the keys to her apartment. But the only thing that we, but oh my god, we can't help but just like, you know what, we're saving our judgment until we actually confirm it. It's right. like, how do you have the keys to an apartment and you are not dating? But then it all made sense. It's like, yeah, we've been dating for months, but we've just never told anyone. Yeah. So that's what I want to see from Rigby. I want to see some relationship development between him and Eileen because we see that he cares about her. He does. So and so when the chips are down, he's probably he's he is gonna step up. So there's probably gonna be this one 
a pretty boy who's interested in Eileen because you know she's a nerd or something, and then Rigby is probably gonna like change into this deep guy or something or the ideal boyfriend or something. Yeah. And that's probably what's gonna happen. That's gonna be the uh, Eileen Rigby episode that JG Quindle has probably been holding out on. Yeah. I mean, in the past, we've had plenty of episodes where um, Mordecai actually had a fight for his love, like figuratively and literally. Yeah. So, you know, hope, hopefully next week's episode, it'll be, it'll be Rigby's turn to, put, to prove that. You, you know, Dude, put, yes, you know, I'm waiting on Put his love for Eileen on the line. Yes. Show that he cares. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Uh, aside from that, like Muscle Man and Starla got married, and I saw that coming. Yeah, we all, we, yeah, we, that wasn't even a spoiler. It was, it was, it was a matter of time, kind of thing. Yeah, basically, they they had no complications with them. I mean, aside from the episode where um, Starla debuted. Yeah, but it was a pretty pretty nice episode. I, I, I wouldn't do the, the deep fryer thing at the end. <laughs> That's a fire hazard. Yeah, that turducken just like backfired literally. But. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I want to see. Just like um, a lot of episodes of the majority of the next season, just dedicates to Rigby and Eileen, right. because I like how JG Quintel was expecting us to have the uh, typical Rigby and Eileen episode where like they just confess, but no, they've actually been dating like all, the whole time. Um, oh yeah, I, I meant to t mention this earlier, but during Margaret's whole um, scene, it seemed. In the not great double date, I want to see if this thing is still recording. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. So, not great double date. Like, we see a side of Margaret that we never had before, as I previously mentioned in the uh, in my review video. She was pulling Mordecai's left and right in this episode, and yeah, I think that became the episode that I just couldn't care for Margaret anymore. Really? Yeah. You didn't find her more relatable, and you just like, oh, she's not so perfect. Well, I mean, she's. I mean, I, I, I get that, and that, that's perfectly fine, you know, you know, especially considering, you know, the, the early, seasons, early seasons when Mordecai was just looking from afar, you know, she's like, the, the junior girl, oh, I want to talk to her, but I can't, I don't know how, mm -hmm. and then uh, we finally got the relationship, relationship going up and started seeing more of how she's rela uh, more relatable, mm -hmm. but it's, it's something about that episode that, like, I don't know. I guess it's uh, more so the lying thing that uh, CJ pointed out. You know, you know, if she, yeah, if she was going that right. far just to say, "Oh, I don't like, I don't really like this guy." If she was going that far. How, how far would she go um, continuously if um, if Mordecai were to get back with her? Mm -hmm. That's what worries me more. I see. But what I did, what I did find, what I did like was uh, the whole um, scene between her and Eileen when she basically just revealed that she was lying about um, sports anchor Dell, I forget his last Dale name. Dell Handling? Dell Handling, I think that was it. That, that just may be it, but that whole um, similarity between Rigby and Mordecai's grow advice to relationship problems, I liked that. It was like very resembling. And how Rick and how um, Eileen uh, not Eileen, uh, Margaret just screwed up the situation even further because Del Hughes started getting carried away with his um with the script. I mean, in, right? in that case, I, Margaret was doing fine. It was Del was going overboard with the story. Exactly, but like the actor. In it. Yeah, it was just <laughs> the whole thing where like everything just started getting worse as the lie progressed, and it was just classic Mordecai, you know. And what I what, what I did like, and I think you'll um appreciate this too, was when she tried to call Rigby for help like from the restaurant. And so oh, yeah. she was like, the like, hey, like, coffee shop. like, hey, what's up? He was like, 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 Rigby, are you there? Like, yeah, hey, what's up? He was like, everything is just going horrible. Della's going off script. Like, ah, oh, yeah. Leave it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they stole that straight from Archer. Yeah. And I love that. That was great. Like, all I wanted to say, all I wanted him to say was, ha, leave it. <laughs> I was like, you know, that was just classic. And, and as soon as they um, said that, I was like, okay, Archer. <laughs> That would that, that would be a perfect way like to end, end that scene just, just uh, Margaret Hall hanging up like ah uh, classic creepy mm -hmm. classic creepy now I just appreciate the fact that like we saw a moment of weakness in Margaret because up until then we just saw her as perfect because we saw just Margaret from Mordecai's perspective right but then we take a look into um, Margaret's you know point of view about everything so I like that moment of weakness it showed depth to her character. 
So um, I'm thinking, but overall, despite that, I'm hoping that we take a break from the whole triangle between Mordecai, CJ, and Margaret, and we just see some more Rigby and Eileen. Yeah, let's get some focus on that while Mordecai kind of heals himself, I guess. Basically, mm-hmm. Like now, um, High Five Ghost, and I forget his um, girlfriend, she, but she was high. I want to see a little bit more of them, too. <laughs> like, maybe they maybe um, they start double dating or something. I don't know. I'm just going to leave the writing up to J.G. Plinsky. Yeah. But, yeah, that's basically all the highlights of uh, the uh, remaining, well, the, yeah, that just may be the uh, last of season six. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. apparently the, 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 the last episode they showed the Don't Tell USA, that's actually the start of season seven. Oh, all right. So we're, we're already in, we're just waiting to see when they're going to show up in new episodes. I, mean, I have a feeling they're probably going to keep doing, um, like they've been doing re- recently, uh, you know, just give a slew of episodes per week since the summer, so, um, especially considering we're you know, mm-hmm. just trying to see. <laughs> okay, we got a little bit of time left. Yeah, we just get a slew of episodes per week because um, they're getting ready to do that with Steven Universe. I think they're just going to keep doing that all summer. All right, good. And uh, I guess um, everything's going to continue in the fall because that's Definitely. usually how Cartoon Network works. So I can't wait to see more of regular show and Steven Universe because I've been keeping up with that too. But we'll, that's for another video. Yeah, it's for, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say that for another time. But um, I hope you guys uh, can chime in with your own comments or uh, what you think is going to happen with uh, the characters of the uh, park. Yeah, it's just called the park as far as Does I'm concerned. Does that have a name? I don't think so. It's just called the park. That's weird. Yeah. It, 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 takes, away, it takes away from my, from my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, from the details. It takes away from the sense. Right. But, yeah, that's basically all the uh, things that transpired as far as uh, what the fans have been wanting in the regular show. So, representing the Lunchbox Publications, this is your man Remington below here, and I do believe it's about that time for Matt to buy me a tasty beverage. Oh, that, that, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Um, it's, it's something that you guys don't know about, but whatever. Um, Matt owes me a drink because I did something Super Bowl this year. But, he deserves it. Yeah. He deserves it. <laughs> but, uh, thanks for uh, watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and follow us on social media. But you know, Jalisa is going to tell you all that in right now. Things don't have to end here. Just visit us at thelunchboxpub.wordpress.com and check us out on other social media outlets. I'll see you there.